New York City is riddled with taxis, somewhere around 13,000. <laughs> and apparently they could all be replaced by a puny 3,000 ride-sharing vehicles. Uh, <laughs> this is the result of research by MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Uh, the research shows a significant reduction in traffic congestion and, of course, fuel use and pollution. They, can, they kind of devised a system here uh, and, and played it out in this example, this research. MIT says that a smaller fleet would meet around 98% of the city's needs with an average wait time of 2.7 minutes. I have to imagine that's a, a pretty good wait time, or I don't know. I, I guess I'm not from New York, so actually when uh, I think about it, you just kind of walk out there and you raise your hand and suddenly there's a exactly. taxi. That's what movies tell me anyways. Exactly. And that, for the most part, for the majority of the city, especially Manhattan, that's that's the, that's the case. And actually, they've actually even improved the outer boroughs with the with the newer green. They have green cabs now for the outer boroughs that are a lot easier to get. Um, this is really cool. And I, I, I dove into this when I saw it in the rundown. Um, I think that it's amazing what MIT's computer science and artificial intelligence laboratory can come up with in a laboratory in a controlled environment <laughs> setting. Um, I think they're not taking a lot of things into account, such as sometimes you don't want to share a ride. Uh, you know, sometimes you sometimes you want, you know, sometimes you've got a group of, you know, two or three people and you want a car to yourself or whatever. Um, there's a lot of human factors to ride sharing that I think are, um, that aren't taken into account here. Additionally, and of course, this whole this whole program doesn't take into account the decades old legacy economy that is, exists from the taxi medallion system, which is never going away. You talk about like one of the strongest unions or like, I don't know if it's a union, but kind of business organizations. But like the, the value of a taxi medallion is even though it's much less than it used to be, it's still like in the hundreds of thousands, which is just crazy. The whole taxi business is a crazy racket. Um, but I mean, the the it's hard to argue the smaller fleet, the 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 traffic congestion problem, and the fuel use and pollution. Those are all all really neat. I gotta think that there's somewhere between what we have now and what this model is offering, where they're gonna meet in the middle. Because essentially, all ride sharing is is harkens back to the 1940s with streetcars. You know, it's the same concept that you want to get from point A to point B. So there's a vehicle going in that direction that you're going to hop into for a short period of time. Yep. Um, of course, streetcars are immensely complicated with track systems and all stuff like that. Um, but, you know, th there's something to be said about consolidating the all the people driving around the city low, the way they are. That said, three minutes to wait for a cab. I'm I'm that's too long. <laughs> See up here in Petaluma, I'm like, oh, yeah. here in Petaluma, I'm like, yes, yeah. that sounds all right. Uh, well, it's it's, it's funny longer. because, but, because you know, New York's a different beast entirely. Well, coming, you know, coming from San Francisco to New York, you know, where, you know, the cab, the cab uh, industry is just decimated in San Francisco because of Uber and Lyft and things like that. Um, coming to New York, I never used Uber or Lyft because you could always just get a cab. Right. right. It's not a right. problem. Um, but the cost savings, of course, and actually in New York, there's a there's a new startup called Juno, um, which is a New York based startup that's giving Uber a run for its money, cheaper rides, basically the same thing when Lyft came out, you know, like they're offering, you know, it's like half the price of Uber or whatever. So it becomes a cost saving thing. But I'm standing on the street in Manhattan. I see it's five minutes till my Uber comes. I go, forget this. I can get a cab in two seconds. You know, so um, yeah. it, it's really interesting to see how the transportation business model, how New York is so unique because of its small, you know, small surface area, which is so many cars that are covered by it. Um, even though, you know, Uber and, and Lyft are surging uh, in the city, it's mainly in those outer boroughs and for people who want to save money and not pay the full taxi fare. Right, right. Yeah. Now, um, I have to imagine, you know, ride sharing companies like Uber and Lyft are already working on what MIT uh, yeah. kind of came up with here. They say critical to their approach here. It's based on four person vehicles. So like you said, it would almost force sharing uh, with other yep. people uh, is dynamic repositioning of the fleet in real time. Uh, they say that makes it 20% faster. So that's like algorithmic changes based on where the fleet is at any given time. And then a new kind of destination, a new, a new pickup emerges, how all of those cars just automatically at the spur of the moment kind of change what their initial plan was in order yep. to kind of reroute to make everything even more efficient as as it goes along. And uh, yeah. that's an interesting well, approach. And I, I'm sure the all the ride sharing companies that are working on self-driving vehicles and stuff are working on just this as well. Yeah. And I have I have a, a practical uh, example of this, which is recently I was here. In, you know, I, so I, I'm in New York City. I'm in I'm in a part of Queens and 
I needed to get to the Home Depot, which was uh, nearby. I mean, not that far um, from where I am, maybe maybe a five to seven minute drive. Um, and I called an Uber and I did Uber pool because it was four bucks, right? And it took me about 35 minutes to get there because they kept on rerouting the driver to pick people up along the way. Uh-huh. And we went all the way away and then all the way back or whatever. So like there's still a lot of science that's got to be solved for this yeah. in order to make it truly optimized. Uh, but it's really interesting and and much like the Tesla self-driving that we talked about earlier in the show, um, you know, just to see the the advancements and the innovations that are coming in transportation in the upcoming years is going to be really exciting. Oof. Yeah, it's going to be a doozy. We got a lot to look yep. forward to.